to another episode of Up and Running in 6 Minutes. Today, we're going to be talking about the CPS IR system. You guys ready to get started? Great. The first thing you guys need to know is, what equipment did you receive? Most likely you have a bag like this, and you're ready to get started. So let's take a look at all the pieces you got. The kit all came in a nice carrying case. As we look at the pieces, one of the things that you're going to see is you got software. Just set that off to the side for the time being. You have this long USB cable, and this is what's going to connect to your infrared receiver. You have your infrared receiver, and most importantly, you have your clicker. If you notice, it's got the number at the top. This is what's going to be correlating to each student. When you first get your kit, your clicker will have a piece of plastic in the back that separates the battery so it's not being used. You simply take that out and now your clicker is ready for use. The sets you would have gotten would have had either 1 through 24 or 32 clickers in the set. Remember those CDs I told you to set off to the side for the software? I want you to keep those off to the side. Before you try to install any software on your computer, Please check with your district personnel or your school-based technician. Some school districts don't allow you to install software, so please check with them. If you are able to and have the permissions to install software on your computer, just go ahead and put the CD in and follow the installation wizard. These CPS clickers are IR, which stands for infrared. They operate just like your remote control for your TV at home. So for example, if that's the TV and I point at it, I get a good signal. What we want to do now is look at placement around the room because this receiver needs to be line of sight for the clicker. When you're setting up your IR receiver, you don't want to have it in the back of the room with the kids facing this way. Remember, placement is critical. You want to have it in front of your students so they can easily point their clicker at the receiver. We're now going to connect the receiver. You're going to take that long USB cable that you got with your kit, you're going to take one end, and you're going to plug it into any open USB port. Now to connect the other end of the receiver, you're simply going to take your receiver, take the open end of your cable, plug it right into the receiver, and now your IR receiver is connected. All right, now that your software is completely installed, either by your school-based technician, district personnel, or yourself, we're ready to get rolling. First step is gonna be, is launching the software. Let's go. To create a new CPS database, follow these directions. Open CPS from the desktop icon. The CPS open or create new CPS database window appears. Choose to create a new CPS file. Click OK. The new CPS file dialog box will open. Navigate your computer to select where to save the file in the Save in text box. Create a new folder by clicking on the New Folder button to store your CPS database. Double click the new folder so that it's displayed in the Save in box. Type a name for the database file in the file name text box. Click Save. Your CPS database file will open. We've gone through the first time user setup. We've got entered all your information. Now we're ready to add a class and of course most importantly, your students. Here we go. The Quick Class option lets you quickly create a class as you deliver a session. Click Engage, then Lessons and Assessments. Click the Engage button in the Verbal group. Click the Create button on the Class section. The CPS Create Class window will appear. Type in a class title, then use the lower range and upper range boxes to indicate the number of response pads you are using in this delivery session as well as designating the response pad ID values in use. 
For example, if you are using five response pads with a response pad ID value range from 11 to 15, type in 11 in the lower range box and 15 in the upper range box. When you're done, click OK. We've got the kids all set up. We've got everything ready to roll. So let's engage your students. Let's get interactive. In CPS, it's possible to ask on-the-fly questions to your class for assessment. You can do this whether you simply want to poll your class or use in coordination with existing content, presentations, or non-CPS resources like websites. We can do this by using the verbal question mode of CPS. We'll start in the Engage tab. Click the Verbal Engage button. The Verbal Question Setup window will open. You can choose to have the grades automatically saved to the CPS gradebook, have results automatically saved to Microsoft Excel, use anonymous mode to not have responses tied to specific students, enter a session title, a session category, the maximum point scale, the appropriate class roster, and even have CPS generate an attendance record based on this assessment. Once you're ready to begin, click OK. The Verbal Engage toolbar appears. The Verbal Engage toolbar has the following options. Choose a verbal question. Choose to deliver a chalkboard verbal question. Change delivery options. Randomly choose a student or take attendance. Exit CPS altogether or close this particular verbal session. Click Verbal and select the question type you would like to pose to your class from the drop-down menu. You would then verbalize the question and the answer options to your class. After the responses are collected, click N to close the question. The charting feature will automatically appear showing the answer distribution for your class. Since the question was verbal and CPS does not know what the correct answer is at this point, it must be manually selected from the drop-down menu on the charting screen. Click Close. When you return to the question window, you'll see cumulative percent correct and question percent correct displayed at the bottom of the screen. This gives you additional feedback and confirms the question has been graded. If you would like to continue on with another question, simply select the question type. If you are finished asking questions, click close. Now that you've just finished being interactive with your students, you've engaged them. Now we want to find out the most critical thing. How did they do? So let's go over to the reports tab and see what we can find out. Click on the Report tab, then on the Reports button. Select the session you would like to evaluate. Click on the Generate button in the Reports group on the ribbon. The reporting window opens. On the left-hand side of the window, you can select which students you would like to evaluate. All students will be selected by default. You can also filter out students who did not respond. Select the report from the reports list on the right-hand side of the window. For this video, I'll choose Instructor Summary. Click Preview at the bottom right-hand corner. A Print Preview window will open, allowing you to view the performance data. The Views column on the left-hand side of the preview window allows you to adjust how the report is displayed. These icons are also found in the toolbar at the top of the screen. If you need to print the report, click on the print icon on the toolbar. When you're finished, click close at the upper left hand corner. Thank you for joining us for Up and Running in 6 Minutes. Please check out one of our other episodes. Have a great day everybody.